Alright, uh, thank you for coming on today, Yosa. Uh, we may as well go straight to it. Uh, in your manifesto, um, you basically take credit for the changes made to the career service. I believe the exact wording was uh, it was your implemented action plan that brought about these changes. That seems rather audacious, considering uh, the work was done alongside like your, your rival candidate for president, uh, Chloe Wesley, the college's enrichment, man enrichment manager, and uh, it receiving coverage in the line. Uh, what do you have to say about that? Well, um, if we look at the way it's worked, it's my action plan, which was firstly devised after I was instituted with the role at the Undergraduate Student Staff Liaison Committee meeting, I was asked to devise a programme to improve it, and that action plan is basically all the things that you're seeing now. So, the Facebook page, the filming of uh, all the workshops, the added marketing, the things that are to go in place with the Lion, all of that uh, you know, that was part of that action plan that you can see on an email. Yes, Chloe's been helpful. I mean, Chloe has organised you know, some of this by the people who have come in. That's completely closed. But what I'm saying is, making the Facebook page and filming the workshops and that area of marketing and using the Lion has been my idea. And that's plainly able to see in the email. Well, it's interesting that you should take credit for the uh, careers page. I mean, one of the original criticisms of the last careers service, of the careers service before, was that the emails sent out were basically just spam containing links to irrelevant websites. And the, you know, the careers Facebook careers page is little better. I mean, I noticed that this morning one of the links went up was for a marine community support position in Scotland. Uh, it was a science graduate. There was another one a few days ago that was a construction graduate job in Hong Kong. If you want to take credit for the careers page, it doesn't seem like it's much better. No, that's spam people from a different from media. <laughs> no, that's exactly why I've just come from a meeting with Hillary, our careers advisor. She doesn't control that feed. What that is, um, that jobs online feed has been set up by someone who's central in the careers service in the University of London. Um, and I've actually just sat with her and been like, this is a joke because we looked at the insights and the engagement and you can see as we go on with these irrelevant things there's less engagement so obviously that's wrong we want to combat that so I've sat down with her and we've actually removed things like science construction um, you know work in um, you know these kind of sciencey areas that are just clearly not relevant for people who study theology or philosophy um, so yes completely taken on board but it has taken some time because it's not controlled within the college confines not by students it's by people who work in the University of London Central Career Service. So it's controlled by the people who work in the University of London Central Career Service. The feed real is, change. Like the feed is. That particular feed is. Particular so the, the feed that's... So what exactly? So, I mean, so you're saying it's not that part of the Facebook page, it's just the uh, videos you put up. It's the are. video, it's the filming of the videos, it's the idea of actually having one, it's the information that goes up on there, it's, it's not just those links, but it's links when Nadim sends us, you know, the links about working abroad, that goes on there, that goes on there as a status, that goes on there as information if you look about the page. It's things like that that are there, that they're ready accessible for students to look at at their own leisure. So obviously the feed I can't take credit for, but other information that goes up is part of you know, my idea. Alright, uh, fair enough. Uh, moving on, in your manifesto you make a big uh, point, at uh, one point, uh, about how you treat everyone equally in office, and then the exact quote is, uh, in conjunction with women's male and female welfare officers. Um, why don't you mention the LGBTQ officer that was recently created? It seems far more relevant. And why is those free? Absolutely, no, I completely take that on board, and that is uh, something that I did miss out, but it's completely within my range of, you know, my vision is that there will be absolutely no discrimination on my part because someone did. Well, that probably seems like a manifesto point. It's something which is a, a part of just being a decent human being. No, absolutely no. But I mean, the, the, the reason I've put that in there is because um, someone did make a, well, rather, well, a bigotry comment to me, um, where, you know, it's like, oh, you're Catholic, you don't, you don't like anyone, you're going to be, you know, X, Y, and Z. So oh, that's why I thought it was necessary to put it in there, because I didn't want people to have a, you know, a misconception about who I am and how I'll be in office. I mean, yeah, uh, originally, the three the free officer roles you mentioned, uh, do you know that there's not actually a women's officer in the union? Exactly why it's going to be implemented. Because you need you know, one. You go, well, you didn't see it, don't worry, it's as as you will implement a union officer. So is that a role you would push to create on the union? Absolutely, because it's necessary that we have a women's officer. Because there's been anecdotal evidence that we've seen over the, the last couple of years that the union is a little boys club. That's completely unacceptable in a modern union. Um, and to have a women's officer that's going to cater for women's needs as well as female welfare is completely necessary. So. I, I'm sorry for not explicitly stating that in my manifesto, but it's definitely within my action plan. That's why it's there, because it's just something that's so important to be in a college that respects genders equally, that 
cannot be accused at any point of being misogynistic, especially when we're in um, you know, a Jesuit college where we have a lot of male teaching staff. It's just imperative that the union respects So you, you think that sexism is a, poly, uh, is a problem upstairs? No, no, I'm just, I'm just saying because obviously we have a lot of priests who are teaching, priests are men, um, obviously there are a lot of females as well, but that's something that people can perhaps make a, you know, an attack about. But I don't think it is a problem. Um, it's just something that happens to be that way. And if we can do anything to help the college by having a, you know, a woman's officer on the union, that's great because it's about the union working with the college to create positive change and to change attitudes. So if by having a women's officer, as I would like to create, that would help the college and the union at the same time, wonderful. Okay, I mean, on the topic of like uh, communication surrounding your manifesto, I don't think I've actually seen a single one around college so far. I mean, I'm actually, I got mine from an email. Um, and also, I think it's not incorrect to so say your postering has been fairly light. Have you actually uh, put much effort into this campaign so far? Well, the effort has gone in, but what you need to understand is that I want a sustainable office. I do not want to see the disgusting situation that we've got in the common room at the moment. How can anyone say that they care about the planet, they care about waste, they care about anything when the bloody common room is wallpapered with trees and ink? Now, I know I'm getting a bit you know, annoyed about this, but it's true. I don't think anyone could honestly say that they want sustainability and they don't want waste when they're clearly just taking the piss with college funds and using the 1P printing offer that Nadim has kindly given us to do that, to create a new wallpaper for the whole basement. That's just wrong. So I'm not engaging in that. I've created 20 posters. They're up around the place. They've been defaced. I don't care. But I am not falling into the trap of wasting paper, of wasting college money and ultimately not doing good things for the planet. Well, I mean, that's a great harm if they're mostly recycled to the environment. But interestingly, you know, you, put, you say you put 20 posters up, how are you planning on communicating your manifesto? I don't think that most people have even seen it. I'd be surprised if a lot of people knew we were running, if I'm honest. Well, that's what I'm here for, to you know, talk to you. The line is here to do that. That's what the website is there for. So when people get an email about voting, they've got also a link to the union website where they can read manifestos. This is a battle about policy. It's not a battle of posters. If anyone votes for someone just because they've made a few swanky posters because they've sat on InDesign for three months, well, great. They might be able to design a poster, but do they have any good policies? You need to read manifestos, and that's exactly what you do when you get your voting email. Fair enough. Um, speaking of policy, I mean, you, you, one of the points you make in your manifesto is to clean up the union office. It doesn't seem, there's a number of things sort of admitted for that like that. That doesn't really seem to be much of a manifesto pledge. Well, no, I mean, if you look at the union office, let's be honest, it's not the most tidy organised affair. So, you know, what does that say about the union? What does that say about our leaders, that they're messy and unorganised? Now, I'm not saying they are, but I'm saying if you were to just go in and look at that, if we have prospective students looking at that, what are they going to think? If you've got a clean union office, that I'm not saying it's going to be immaculate all the time, that's impossible, but you know, it's got to look the part. And the way it is at the moment with rubbish on the floor, I mean, because it is, there is a lot of stuff there that shouldn't be there. We've got an open day on today, and it's still like that. Is that the image you want your union to convey to prospective students? So oh, that's the problem, I job to uh, look after students who are already here. Um, but anyway, that's, you know, if that's something, I don't see why that's necessarily, necessarily worth putting in. Do you have anything else you'd rather talk about, rather than sort of being slight jabs at the current union? It's not slight jabs at the current union, it's a problem inherent within that office, and it's just, it needs to be sorted out. And it's like my accountability. I mean, if you look at the office, a lot of the time, no one's in there. Now, I'm not saying that they're not there not doing anything, they're probably at meetings, but I don't know they're at a meeting. I don't know when they're going to be back. So that, that means, you know, when you look at my office strategy, it's an open office that is clean, that you've got somewhere to sit if you need to come and talk to me as president or my vice president or any of the exec that will be in that office at all times, you can. And if I'm not there or if no one's there, you'll be able to see on the public calendar I've suggested where I am and what I'm doing to fight for your rights with the college. Well, the, um, all of the union office hours, executive office hours are already posted on the union website. Um, and they all have uh, blogs as well, and the president definitely has one. So that's something which already exists. How regularly updated are they? How, you know, how do we know about it? You have to go and check that. These things should be well, up and around the well, no, no, Which is already a thing. No, but to have a public calendar online where I, you can go in and look at my month, 
So you can see, not on a weekly, you can't just, you know, don't just read my blog that you have to look at. You can look at a 30 day blog and you can see what I've been doing every single working day of the week to make sure the college is fulfilling its obligations to our students. Um, and I'll point you get mentioned about getting Fordham more involved. Yeah. Um, alongside internationals uh, and various others. Now, obviously, we all see the value of internationals being involved. Um, but I don't see why Fordham students who don't pay into uh, our union coffers and the union subsidised events should have the same access to them. It seems like we'd be subsidising their fund. I completely understand that, but what do you value? Do you value a couple of quid in the bar, or do you value the richness of the community that we have, the diverse rich community we can have in the common room? You know, these Fordham students come in from a completely different culture, they're studying different subjects. If we go in and have a chat with them, you know, that's going to enrich our lives, our experience. It's going to make Heathrop bigger, a part of a wider community. How can anyone not want that? And if they're in the bar, they're going to be paying the fees as well. You know, they're paying for the booze. So, you know, it, it, obviously it might not be the best financial point to make us money, but certainly in terms of experience, it's got to be worth it. Mm, that's just interesting because I know in your manifesto you mentioned um, about being accountable with the money. You've been Absolutely. pledged to have the complete and open uh, financial reports. I think that's an interesting one. For the union, yeah. If the union spend money on something, it will be there. Any financial reports that are to do with me, because obviously as the president, you're a signatory on the accounts, you know, if I sign off something, you're going to know about it. You need to know. It's a standard facet of organisations that if you're a member of something, you can see the financial reports. As far as I'm aware, they're not easily accessible. So that is something that I will do so that if we do have an event that involves Fordham and it might lose a couple of pence or a couple of pounds or whatever it is, you'll know about it. And with my Q&A sessions that I'm going to do every two weeks, you'll be able to question me about it. So if you think that I've done something that's wrong, if I've used your money in the wrong way, please tell me, because I'm here to represent you and do what you want, not represent my own agenda. Okay. Um, now, on the uh, sort of grapevine, as it were, it was already said you were running with VP um, with Chloe. Is there any truth for that? That was Chloe's suggestion to me a little while ago um, that I should maybe think about running for a new office. And, you know, she did mention VP, but I thought if I'm going to do this, I want to do it properly. And I think that my skills and the skill set that I bring is definitely more geared towards the presidential role rather than the vice president role. So the reason I'm doing it like that is because I just feel that with everything that I've done in my career, in my personal life, it's just so much more focused on the presidential role rather than the role of the vice president, which we've got two very good candidates for. So you stabbed him in the front, basically? No. I feel I can do the job very well. I was not well, saying that she was the one who sort of planted the idea in your head. Well, she, she asked me to be her VP, but I, you know, that's, that's not, if I'm going to do something, I want to do something for the, for the good of Heathrop, and I think that I will do my best to make sure Heathrop gets the best president that it can have. All right, uh, fair enough. Thank you for coming in to talk yesterday. Sorry. Thank you for coming in to oh, talk yesterday. Not at all. Thank you.